Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 6 from the May 2008 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Now a bit of a disclaimer before I get into the question. The topic in this question is incomplete records. Now, this is 2022, and on the current iteration of the CSEC PUA syllabus, this topic was removed. Now, there are some interesting techniques you can use here to prep some T accounts to find missing figures and these things. And there are other students uh, who do syllabuses other than P uh, CSEC POA that actually still have this topic on their syllabus. So I'm doing it to help them out and to have a complete set of solutions for this particular past paper. So with that in mind, let's get into the question. Okay, so they tell us that the following information is a summary of K. Ramesh's bank account for the year end of December 31st or 7th. So we have a cash book summary. We have balance brought forward 917. We have cash sales receipts from debtors. Okay. On the credit side, payments to creditors, salaries, rent, rates, general expenses, new equipment, drawings, and a balance carried forward. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have some additional information. So we have opening balances and closing balances. So the December 31st, 2006 was the end of the previous year, which kind of coincided with the start of the current year. And then December 31st, 07, which is the current year end. We have an opening balance for equipment, but not a closing balance. But remember, we saw up in the cash book just now, we bought new equipment, inventory or stock, opening and closing balance for stock, debtors, opening and closing balance, same for creditors. Now, rates paid in advance and rent accrued have no opening balances, but they have closing balances. General expenses accrued as an opening balance. Interesting. Now, we have one more piece of information here. It says, Depreciation on equipment is to be provided at the rate of 10% per annum on the straight line method. Okay, the first thing they want us to prepare for five marks is K. Ramesh's opening statement of affairs. Now, a statement of affairs is simply a capital calculation. It's not as complicated as a balance sheet, but we do group assets together, find a subtotal, group liabilities together, find a subtotal, and then subtract. Assets minus liabilities is equal to capital. Now, you head it up relatively simply, K. Ramesh, the name of the entity, Statement of Affairs, as at December 31st, 2006. Or you could put Jan 1st, 2007, doesn't matter. Now, we're going to start with the assets. Now, don't forget, right, we could start with equipment. So, the equipment was given to us here, 15750. We also have inventory, stock, and debtors. So, we're going to put inventory or stock in as well as debtors. But don't forget, we also had a cash balance. Now, they used to love to do this, right? They would put the cash book balance up in the cash book or the cash account or whatever they gave you, but they wouldn't put it in the list of balances below. So you had to be mindful enough to remember, hey, I have an opening cash balance of 917. Let me put that in my statement of affairs as well, right? They used to catch a lot of students like that. And it just goes to show that I felt that this topic or questions like it should still be on the paper to help people stay on their toes. But anyhow, that's my opinion. So we're going to add up those items and get a subtotal for assets of 29925 Now what about liabilities? So back in the list of balances, we had creditors, 3010 And we also had general expenses accrued, 420 And accrued expenses are liabilities. Current liabilities to be specific. So we only had two items. So you're going to add those up. And you're going to get that figure, that subtotal, which you will subtract from the asset subtotal to give you capital of 26495 Okay, right. So that's the end of part A. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so part B to the question says, prepare accounts or statements to show credit purchases and credit sales. Long story short, they're asking us to do creditors control accounts and debtors control, sorry, a creditors control account and a debtors control account. So let's tackle the creditors control account first. So we're going to go to our list of balances and we're going to put in the opening and closing balances for creditors. Creditors is a liability. Liabilities have credit balances at start. So the 3010 is going to go on this side here. And that 3234 is going to be brought down on the credit side as well. But prior to being brought down on the credit side after you balance off the account, it has to first be carried down from the debit side like this, right? The next item we're going to put in is up in the cash book. The payments to creditors, right? So that's going to go on the debit side of the control account because when you pay back your creditors, you reduce your liability. And to record a reduction in a liability, you have to debit the liability account. The missing figure is the credit purchases. How do we find that? We balance off the account. 
So you add up the items on the debit side and you subtract the one item on the credit side and you'll get your credit purchases, right? Now, when you add up both columns, you're going to get the same total like this, okay? Now, let's take a look at the debtor's control account. So we're going to go back again to the opening and closing balances. So for debtors, we have 5698 and 6510. Now, debtors is an asset. Assets have debit balances. So you're going to see the 5698 brought down on this side and the 6510 is going to be brought down on the debit side as well. But, after, but prior to being brought down on the debit side, you have to first be carried down from the credit side, right? So this is before the account is well, balanced off for the period. Now, the other item that will go inside of here is the receipts from debtors. Now, we have a cash sales figure, but that is not affecting the debtors, right? That's a separate sales figure. Receipts from debtors is 28,567. It's on the debit side of the cash book, which means it's going to be on the credit side of the debtor's control. Why? Because, well, every debit needs a corresponding credit. And when debtors pay us back, they reduce the amount of money they owe us, which means the asset of debtors is going down. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. Okay, now, obviously, we're missing something here, and that's going to be the credit sales figure. So we're going to simply add up the items on the credit side and subtract the one item on the debit side, and we're going to get the credit sales item. And when we total both sides, we'll get the same total because we have, well, figures amounting to the same totals in each column. Okay, that's the end of part B. Let's take a look at part C. Okay, so for part C, we have to prepare K. Ramesh's trading and profit and loss account for the year ended December 31st or 7. Trading and profit and loss account was what they used to call the income statement back in the day. So we're going to head up K. Ramesh, income statement for the year ended December 31st, 2007. The first item is going to be sales. Now, we have two sets of sales. As you just saw in the control account, we have credit sales. And in the process of doing that, you also saw in the cash book summary, we have cash sales. So we're going to have to add those two sales figures together. And that's going to give us total sales of 87,675. Now, we don't have any returns inwards, so we could go straight to cost of goods sold. So we need opening stock and closing stock, which the question provides for us quite kindly. So 85, sorry, 7560, and we have to add purchases. Now we just calculated the purchases figure or credit purchases in the control account for creditors. That was 59,780, which we'll add to the opening stock and get the cost of goods available for sale. Now we're going to subtract the closing stock of 8613, and that's going to give us the cost of goods sold of 58,727. Subtracting that from the total sales is going to give us gross profit. Now we didn't have any other revenues, but we had expenses. Going to the credit side of the cash book, I'm seeing salaries 9335, and we didn't have any adjustments in the section, in the sorry, the list of balances there, so we're going to put 9335 outright. Now, rent and rates, right? Rent was 2759, but in the list of balances, we had rent accrued at the end of the period of 875. So, what do we do with accrued portions? We add them on. So, we're going to take the 2759, add 875, and get 3634. For the rates item now, Rates was 875, and at the end of the period, we had rates paid in advance of 175. Paid in advance means prepaid. We subtract prepaid port, prepaid pieces or prepaid portions from the figure up in the cash book to get the actual rates expense. Okay. Next, we had general expenses 5691. Now, this one was interesting. We had general expenses accrued at the start, but not at end, which means we paid off what we owed. The 420, and we paid off everything owed for this period, everything incurred for this period. So, when we have accrued expenses at end, we add them on to the figure from the cash book or the trial balance. When we have accrued expenses at start, we have to subtract them, right? So, we're going to put that here, right? General expenses, which is 91 minus 420, right? Now, the last item is the depreciation. So, we have equipment of 15,750, but we're seeing a question mark under the closing balance. Now, don't forget, we bought new equipment of 3500 so we're going to have to add the 3500 to the 15750 but then we have a depreciation uh, rate of 10% per annum straight line method so we're simply going to have to find 10% of that total of the 15750 plus the 3500 now that gives us 1925 and when we total up all the expenses we get 2865 which when we subtract from the gross profit will give us our net profit of 8083 and that's the end of this question Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question six from the May 2008 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. 
Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful payway handles. Anyhow, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.